In 1976, David Crisali, a midshipman at the United States Naval Academy, flight tested one of the largest and most sophisticated amateur rockets ever constructed. In 1989, he began building an even larger rocket, a 20-foot liquid propellant vehicle capable of lifting 15 pounds of payload to a peak altitude of 30 nautical miles using a 1,000-pound thrust engine burning liquid oxygen and kerosene. The thrust chamber was assembled from several pieces of mild steel welded together to form the inner and outer walls of the regeneratively cooled motor. The injector was machined from 4130 steel and was subjected to water flow calibration in preparation for hot fire testing. The completed engine will deliver 45,000 pound seconds or over 200,000 newton seconds of total impulse. Propellant tanks were fabricated from sheet aluminum. Components were machined, then welded into complete units, which were leak and proof pressure tested. Early in 1990, work began on the support equipment required for full duration propulsion system static tests. The first test was conducted in June of 1990, but was only partially successful. Improvements were made to the propellant feed system, and a second test was run in March of 1991. This time, the entire propulsion system worked flawlessly. With the engine system design verified, work continues on the flight vehicle, the 50-foot transportable launch tower, and all required ground support equipment. David Crisali is a member of the Reaction Research Society. 
an amateur rocket group active in this field since 1943. Other members are also building rockets. In all, some eight vehicles are now in various stages of construction, including a 17-foot nitric acid furfural alcohol rocket being built by Brian Worley, and a similar size LOX alcohol rocket designed by Jim McKinnon and Eric Stanglin. Between July of 1990 and March of 1991, eight static tests were carried out on seven different propulsion systems. Among those were Scott Claflin's 1,500-pound thrust LOX alcohol engine. Ignition. and Steve Palm's 1,000-pound thrust liquid oxygen alcohol system, which was fired at night. Five, four, three, two, one. Bruce Markle has designed a vertical guidance system which will be used in David Crisali's liquid rocket. This was the first of several successful test flights to verify aerodynamic stability and control. Ignition! A major milestone was achieved by Mark Grant in October of 1991. A 35-foot launch tower was constructed and erected at the RRS Mojave test site. After days of preparation and two unsuccessful launch attempts, the 300-pound thrust liquid oxygen kerosene vehicle was loaded on the rail and tanked with propellants. On the third attempt, the long hours came to fruition with a few moments of splendid flight. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, ignition. Mark Grant successfully designed and launched one of the very few liquid propellant rockets ever built by a private individual. In recent years, there has been a resurgence of activity in the field of amateur rocketry. The new effort is providing a unique educational opportunity to a new generation of students, engineers, and scientists. Cooperation between those interested in the fields of electronics, computers, mechanical engineering, and propulsion engineering is leading to advanced projects and capability in the amateur community. In amateur rocketry, the sky is never the limit. With the conclusion of propulsion system testing, work began in earnest on the flight vehicle, payload, and ground support equipment. 
Following the last static test of the flight propulsion system, the engine was inspected and found to be in excellent condition. It was subsequently overhauled to prepare it for assembly into the rocket. A final water flow calibration of the injector was completed, seals were replaced, and the engine was reassembled. A preliminary design for the flight vehicle was completed, allowing fabrication to proceed on components of the airframe. An engine mount to carry the thrust loads up into the vehicle structure was constructed from chrome moly steel tubing. Fuselage bulkheads, longerons, and stringers were built and assembled to form the structure of the rocket. The engine, liquid oxygen tank, fuel tank, helium pressure and tank, and helium system plumbing have been installed in the structure. Work began on the 60-foot launch tower designed for this project. The tower is assembled from six 10-foot sections. Each section was built from welded electrical conduit. The tower is complete and the work is continuing on the hydraulic lift mechanism and base. Payload work was also being conducted during this time frame. Bruce Markle completed two solid propellant test vehicles. Each carried an amateur band television transmitter built by Mike Henkoski and a roll stabilization system. Roll stabilization in the liquid rocket will be provided by rollerons in movable fin tabs. Smaller versions were built by David Crisali for these test rockets. The rollerons are spun prior to launch by compressed nitrogen directed at the edge of the serrated rolleron wheel. In flight, the wheels continue to spin under the influence of airflow over the wheel teeth. If the vehicle begins to roll, the spinning wheel, by virtue of its gyroscopic effect, will precess the tab in a direction to counteract the roll. The first test rocket was flown with this equipment on the 2nd of May, 1992. Start Five, four, three, two, one. While the television transmitter and rollerons worked perfectly, the parachute tie line parted and the vehicle impacted the ground at high velocity. Amazingly, the television transmitter and camera survived the fall from 2,000 feet and were still functioning after the crash. The onboard video shows a bird's eye view of the launch and the success of the rollerons. The second vehicle was built with a much larger motor, smaller rollerons, and the refurbished television transmitter. A launch was conducted on 27 June 1992, and the vehicle reached a peak altitude of 8,000 feet. This time, the recovery system worked.
The smaller rollerons, coupled with the higher velocities experienced on this flight, did not control vehicle roll as well as the larger ones used previously. The flight video shows the jitter experienced by the rocket in flight. This data is being used to finalize the design for the liquid rocket rollerons. Work is continuing on the vehicle payload, guidance, and flight structures. The launch tower, electrical control, and propellant handling equipment are also being ready to support a launch at the White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico. If successful, this rocket will reach higher altitudes than have ever been attained by any privately built craft.